Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of React with WordPress. So, so far what we've done is we have gone ahead and displayed all of the posts and we've also done the single post as well and we have created the login functionality and in this episode we're going to learn about how to create a new post. Okay, so I've gone ahead and make some little tweaks right now uh, wherein I have added some dashboard as well so, so that it looks good. And let me just show that to you. So I log in and this is my React application connected to WordPress. And you can see we have a beautiful WordPress dashboard. You have the username being mentioned over here. You can go back to home. You can go back to dashboard. You can toggle between the sidebar. You have an option to add a new post over here. You can see this is create post. And this is my front end React application. If I try to submit it without anything, you have error handling in place. So I can put like, this is my title, this is content, and I can just submit it. And there you go, you can see the new post created. I go back to the dashboard, sorry, I go back to the home page and you will see that this post is showing right here. Isn't that brilliant? And I'm using the WordPress REST API. So if I now go back to my WordPress dashboard and go to posts, there you go. You can see published one minute ago. This is the one I've just published and this is my title and I have the content as well. Brilliant. Awesome. So this is how you can create post. Um, now you must be wondering that I have a dashboard here. So I'm not going to go over uh, how to create a WordPress dashboard in React because I'm assuming that if you've reached this level, you've already done with the authentication bit you already know basics of react so i'm going to go over just to, uh, just uh, you know just the information about it as to how i build this dashboard but i won't really be coding uh, about how to build the dashboard the idea over here to to train you on uh, the advanced stuff like creating post with the rest api from your front end react application and uh, also going ahead and creating custom endpoints in REST API. So uh, those are the main goals of this tutorial series. So let me go ahead and show you what all I have done, okay? So what I've done is basically I've added some styles on all of the dashboard components into my style.css. I have created a layout which is a dash for dashboard so that I can reuse it on all of my dashboard pages. I don't have to rewrite the same code. I'm sure you must have worked already with creating layouts in React. Okay, so let me show that to you. So this is my dashboard layout component. So what's going on inside of this component? We're just creating class-based component. Well, you must be wondering, can we create a functional-based component? Yes, we can. We have React hooks now. Uh, but I just want to show you that if there are any projects where you already have class-based components and now you want to write functional-based component, can I actually do a mix and match? Can I use hooks as well as uh, with the, uh, can I use hooks with the old uh, project where I've used classes? Well, yes, you can. You can do a mix and match as well. However, I would say that if you are working with hooks uh, right from the beginning, then it's better to code everything in um, functional based programming uh, sorry functional based uh, components however if you have already built something in class it's okay i mean you don't if you don't have time to refactor it so i'm just going to go ahead and create the functional based component uh, you know in future but for now i'm just going to show you this one so we have a dashboard layout uh, which is a class based component you have a constructor uh, we set a state where we set this active to false so that we can toggle between uh, the dashboard uh, sidebar etc okay and uh, we have this uh, ha handle sidebar toggle click for the button that we have right here and inside of the content we have the sidebar menu so this right sidebar sorry the sidebar on the left hand side that you see over here is coming from the sidebar menu if you just open it let's just go inside of this quickly so you have I'm using hooks over here so I'm using functional based component I'm using use state. I'm just setting the menu to uh, act, uh, I'm setting the value of the sub menu active to false initially. And then when this button is clicked, then I'm just going ahead and uh, changing this value. 
and I'm also pulling the username from get username so the job of this function is just to get the username from the local storage so if you remember from my previous videos we are storing the uh, information uh, which is the username into local storage and uh, we are pulling all of the information about the user from the uh, local storage okay so we're just using this function so that we don't have to rewrite that code over and over again we can just use it over here so we have a nav and inside of that we have just an, a link that takes me to the home page uh, of the dashboard which is this link right here okay and then we have a ul li and then we have another link which basically is not doing anything right now just opening this later on we'll link it to all posts like we have in the wordpress like this one so we'll go ahead and create that component later on but today we're going to focus on a new post adding new post okay then we have the ulli which is basically the sub menus um, we have all posts right here then we have add new so currently this add new will take me to create posts i've removed everything so that i can show you from scratch how to create posts and then we have multiple um, other menu items currently don't do anything uh, they will probably be added later at some point okay so that's the job of the sidebar menu and then we have the content and this content will actually have this dot props dot children which means later on when you are actually reusing this layout whatever you put inside of this wrap uh, that will be rendered over here okay so content is basically responsible of, for this area right here so this auto adjusts the um yep great so let's see here you go okay so this auto adjusts the width automatically as you can see in this all with javascript and css so we're just passing some of the props like active uh, state which we are setting over over here okay and then handle sidebar toggle click the job of which is to just to toggle between the active state of the um, of the active property okay uh, let's go inside of this content so over here we don't have anything fancy going on we're just toggling the class of active so that we can show and hide this sidebar okay so and then we have the nav bar which we already had it last time we just tweaked it a little bit so we're just handling the logout over here just removing the token from uh, the local storage and then resending the user to the root URL which is the home in case if the user logs out and then we have your navigation going on if the user is logged in go ahead and show the dashboard link right here if he isn't then just show the login link and if he is logged in then also show the logout which, is, which should be yeah over here okay right now we also have the login and uh, right here we have the button which is toggle sidebar button which is coming over here so in case if the user is uh, logged in then show it to us and if he's actually on the on the route on the home then show it you might as well want to change this to in case if he's uh, you know on the dashboard itself okay um, okay so we'll change that later okay and then this sidebar button is just a button which uh, has an on click event handler which is handle side sidebar toggle click so there's an event on on this on click and then we just toggle between the active class so that we can hide and show okay the sidebar so that's what's happening over here inside of this button and uh, we have the props.children over here okay so basically just go back over here yep this dot props dot children okay is also passed here into props dot children okay so whatever content we're going to put inside of the layout when we are reusing this component that will be displayed over here which is in this section right here okay so that's about it for the dashboard layout and the navbar as well so i've explained pretty much all of that to you 
I hope I haven't missed anything else. Let me just check. So we have the dashboard, then we have the posts, we have a create post component, we have sidebar and toggle. I've already shown that to you. This is your home component. So your home component for your dashboard, all we are doing is we are reusing the dashboard layout that we have just created as I've just shown you. We have created this and this dot props dot children will be replaced by whatever you put inside of the dashboard layout uh, wrap. Okay, and then we're just getting the username from this function and we're just saying welcome and then username is being passed over here. So that's pretty much it for uh, explaining to you what has changed compared to last video it's, it's not a big thing uh, but let's focus on creating the post okay so jumping back to my create post component um, this is where we are going to create a form which handles the post creations creation and uh, this is just a create post component which is a class post component and uh, we are just importing dashboard layout so that we don't have to rewrite the sidebar and the top nav and everything uh, all of that logic is already contained within the dashboard layout which we have got here we're just putting the content on it over here in this section okay awesome and just exporting that and we are adding these routes into our app.js component which is our main component so just to take you through so home component takes us to home which is here right here and then login takes us to login currently he's, he's logged in so login won't show then we have the dashboard which basically is going to take you to the root which uh, which is the dashboard main home page then we have create post so this one right here will take you to the create post you can see dashboard create post that's the route and then you have the single post so that basically was the when you go to home page you click read more that's when you get the single page available, right? Awesome. So since you've got a gist of what's happening here, I hope I was not too fast. And now we're going to talk about to, uh, how to create the post. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do inside of our create post is go ahead and define a constructor function. So if you work with classes, you know that we can define a constructor function in order for us to uh, define the state so we do super props so props are available to us now you must be wondering oh come on use hooks you've got <laughs> it's 21st century <laughs> but it's okay let's just stick to classes yes I will come back to hooks I'll come back to functional component we will do it don't worry okay let's continue so this dot state and and this way also it helps me keep in practice otherwise we want to forget about how the class component works so we set the title so because we need the title okay and then we need the content so we'll set that as well and then we need the user ID because that's how we're going to recognize which user we want to go ahead and create the post for we need the token because we need to send a authenticated request so token is going to be passed in the header in fact let me show that to you while I do this so if you go to the WordPress REST API okay and then if you click over here and then go to references then you go to posts and then you can see create posts okay so this is the URL you need to create post on and you need to pass the authenticated token that you've got with better token uh, with better uh, word uh, string uh, along with your request inside of the header okay uh, because we've already authenticated it with the JWT token plugin we already have the token we just need to send it okay so let's continue so we need the token and then we will set a property called pro post created so that we can handle some of the messages initially we'll set that to false then we'll set loading to false so that we can handle our loader loading okay and uh, 
we also would like to go ahead and add a function called in fact before even we go over there I think it's better if we go ahead and get the user ID and the token so we'll say component did mount and we need the user ID so user ID will be equal to local storage dot get item and then we want to get the user ID okay okay well I don't want this video to be too long so I'm gonna catch you in the very next video okay and I'm gonna go ahead and continue from where we left okay so I'll see you then. I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up to my video and do subscribe to my channel. And uh, to show your support, please give a star to my repository over here. And do follow me on Twitter. So my Twitter handle is Imran et Sayed. Okay. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.